The Fed has come out. They're keeping rates the same, which was what was expected here. If you look right here on the CME, about a 2.5% chance of a rate cut, 97.5% chance of keeping rates the same, which is a far different cry than it was just in December. And I say that all the time as a lesson to be learned that we have no idea what's going to happen in the economy. They've come out and said, we don't see much progress getting towards that 2% core inflation goal. Now, the question is, is that a reasonable goal? I don't know. Guys, here's core inflation rate going back to 1957. The average is 3.68%. Now, that also includes this portion of the 70s and 80s where it was really, really high. So let's take that out and maybe it's somewhere three. I can pull up the, I can pull up the data and find it. It probably is lower than 3%, but 2% seems to be a little hard, especially considering we're doing something called printing a lot of money. And printing money is an inflationary decision. Now, guys, if you're seeing this video for the first time, if you're seeing our channel for the first time, I highly encourage you to follow us. And the reason being subscribe to us because it is now 2.27 p.m. And this video will be out within the next 30 or 45 minutes. We are the fastest channel to react to news in the market. We react to earnings, react to economic news, react to all these things because we know people want to hear about it. Now, I also use it as a way of teaching a way of mentality, of emotion, because we hear these things and there's a lot of emotions. Look at Starbucks. Starbucks just reported. They did terrible yesterday. The stock was down 17%. And I posted on Twitter. This is my Twitter account. I posted literally an hour and 15 minutes ago about is Starbucks a buy, hold, or sell? Let me know. Now, I like getting these reactions to people, but you got to remember, I don't make decisions based on what the Fed's doing. I don't make decisions based on what earnings come in or out of. And if that's the kind of world you want to live in, you got to follow us because I believe in looking at companies from a long-term perspective. And you cannot say you're a long-term investor, but then get upset if they miss or, be, or get excited if they beat on earnings or things like that. It's all about understanding where is the company today? Where is it going? Every company, good or bad, has several times missed, beaten. All these things have happened. The question is, what really matters? Does the information you look at matter? That's the hard part about investing is we sit there and we get all this data flowing to us. We get the Fed. They're worried about 2%. But today we had 192,000 jobs reported and very strong job market, which I thought would be inflationary. And I thought markets would plummet. They rebounded. Okay, we have no idea what's going to happen. Frankly, it doesn't matter to me. I'm just here and I want you to be in the same position I'm in, which is where can I find good companies at good prices? And if the market reacts one way or the other, I can sit there and go in that direction. I'm quite sure when I look at these results from this poll, is Starbucks a buy, a hold, or sell? Less than half say a buy. The rest say hold and sell. I'm willing to bet if I put this poll out 48 hours ago, it would have been a lot different. My guess is this probably would have been higher. I have no empirical evidence for that. What I should do is say it beforehand. My guess is it would have been 65 or 70% a buy, and the rest would have been a hold or sell. But we got some news recently, and that led to this. Now, back to the CME. What are we expecting for the future? Well, remember, back in December, they were expecting six or seven rate cuts. The next one on June 12th, what's the market expecting? About a 93.6% chance of rates staying the same, a 6.3% chance of a 25 bips, 0.25% cut, and a 0.1% chance of a half rate cut. It's a pretty big cut. And on this site, you can keep going further and further. Let's go to December of 2024. This year, December, there's a 41% chance, according to this, that we will be lower, a quarter point lower, still a 25% chance with the same interest rate. 25%, guys. And of course, you go down the line. So according to this, there's a 75% chance we are lower than we are today. 25% chance of a half point cut, 7% chance at a 0.75% rate cut, and almost 1% chance of a full percentage point. But I bring this up in every video. My question to you is, what would have to be happening economically for this to be occurring? Is the Fed just going to say, you know what? We're good. We got our inflation down. Let's start cutting rates. Guys, lower rates means higher inflation. Why do we cut rates? We cut rates to spur growth. Spurring growth increases income. Increasing income means that core, core goods, raw materials, these things cost more money. When they cost more money, the end product has to be, the price has to be risen, raised. When the price is increased, 
What does that lead to? That's inflation. So I look at this saying, let's think a few steps down the line here. What would have to happen for these rates to be like this? Now, keep in mind, our stock market's higher than it was when we started cutting rates, when we started increasing rates from 0% back in March of 2022, right? So anything can happen. It's unbelievable to me. We had 0%. Now the the 90-day treasury is at 5.4% or so. That's incredible. And for you as an investor, you should want this. The better investors want higher rates. They don't want the dumb money out there chasing bad companies and hype companies. You should want higher rates, people. Same with real estate deals. For those of you out there who are trying to buy a house, I know it sucks because you have to go look at 7% interest rates. Listen, I'm buying a condo here in Dallas soon. I just went under contract. I'm looking at 7% interest. And I just go, okay, it is what it is. And I think that over time, my, now granted I can afford it, but even you out there who sees this big increase, if you're lucky enough to already own a home, your home's probably appreciated quite nicely in value. But hopefully income will start catching up and you'll be and pretty soon the norm will be six to 7% interest. And that's just the way it is over time. People think like, oh, we're just gonna go right back down in interest rates. Guys, we're about where we should be historically on interest rates. We're actually a little lower than history on the 10-year treasury. And that's with a very recent last 10 years of not very high rates. So these are all the things that just sit there. And when there's so many data points, it almost discredits the value of those data points. And I want to encourage you to enjoy these data points. I love hearing about the Fed. I love listening to Fed Chairman Powell, who I think has done a phenomenal job fighting inflation against public sentiment. But I want you to enjoy those, but not let it interfere with your decision-making when it comes to buying good companies. I want you to be able to sit there and say, root on down markets. Down markets are great. I loved yesterday, 2% down. Keep going, baby. If you love the stock market at this price, you should love it even more at this price. But unfortunately, the stock market's the one place where people get more excited as they pay more. It's counterintuitive. Everybody in the world brags about the good deal they got in their house. Everybody brags about the good deal they got in their car. Everybody brags about every good deal they got except for the stock market. Oh, I'm in this company. I bought this company. They're changing the world. Great. Awesome. Sounds good. But I'm trying to teach that process. And that process is every investment is the present value of all future cash flow. That does not mean that when you buy a company, it'll go straight up. That's not going to happen. It will likely go down. That's part of the process. That's part of the emotion. The emotional part is seeing a company like Starbucks fall 17.5% in one day and get excited about it and go, I'm buying some. That's hard to do. That's hard to do. Now, my thesis on everything is I look at buying big companies that have a short-term price movement for something that's a short-term issue. I don't think Starbucks missing earnings and seeing same-store sales down is going to be a permanent problem. They're still a great company with a highly addictive and highly committed fan base. You know, somebody on Twitter wrote, well, Paul, it's a very competitive business. Look how many coffee companies have come out in the last 30 years. And my response was, yes, and they beat them all. Look at how many coffee companies came out in the last 30 years and they beat them all. And it's still, if you ask 100 people, name the number one coffee company in the world, how many are going to say Starbucks? I don't know the exact answer, but if it was on Family Feud, somebody tells me you're getting a lot of points if you say Starbucks. And if you're in the final Family Feud showdown and you say Starbucks, your next person, guess what they're saying? Starbucks, they'll get the eh, eh, ding, ding, ding. And they have to do another one. And they're going to say, uh, 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 Dunkin' Donuts. That's my point. That's my point about all of this. It's all just, in my opinion, for most companies, it's a lot of talking. But I want to teach that process. I want to teach the emotion that when you see these things fall, when you see the market fall, you sit there and take it as a positive. You sit there and embrace it. That's what we've done in the community. This community is incredible because you have thousands of people in here that sit there and they talk every day and they help each other and they support each other when things feel tough. That's the most important thing. So if you want to make better decisions, if you want to make less emotional decisions and you want to make better fundamental decisions, join the community. Click the link below. There's only a set number of spots every single day. I think we're down to like six spots today available. Click it, sign up, and $7 for seven days and if you hit the wait list, if there's, things are popped up, there is a way to get more advanced in the wait list. So make sure you do that. But this is $7 for seven days. Check it out. Now, the S&P is about even. 
The Dow's up 0.6. Oh my God, everything just jumped. Powell must have said something. Literally everything just jumped. Powell must have said something. All right, maybe he did. I don't know what he said. Guys, I'm absolutely blown away. This is an article here. Stocks just skyrocketed. Here's a, here is a recap. Powell, four minutes ago, gaining enough confidence to cut rates will take longer than expected. I would have never thought this would cause stocks to go up. I don't know if that's the reason. What's above it? Powell, res, policy is restrictive and holding down demand. That's the whole point. When you want to keep inflation down, you've got to hold down demand. You can't have your cake and eat it too. That's the unfortunate part. We all want to have low rates and low inflation. Unfortunately, that can't be the case. It's a balancing act. And that's one of the Fed policy mandates. Their mandate is price controls and full employment. They want to make sure, not price controls, but keeping prices down, keeping inflation down. I'm actually surprised by this. Gaining enough confidence to cut rates will take longer than expected. Proof that anything can happen. Anything can happen in, this, in, in these markets. The markets are currently skyrocketing. Absolutely skyrocketing. Wow, NASDAQ's up almost 1% now. Incredible. Guys, we never know what's going to happen. All the more reason, five great companies at great prices and they fall and the fundamentals are still the same. You buy more of it and you thank your lucky stars you're able to. But guys, I look back at this and look at core inflation and I'm like, yeah, take out this part. And it's still probably two to 3% as core inflation historically. So the goal of 2%, maybe they're just trying really hard to get there. Maybe they're really trying to cool things down. I don't know what's going to happen. All I know is if it leads to people being hating companies and hating stocks, it's going to give me an opportunity to go buy more stocks at prices I prefer. And guys, stocks can fall very easily. Look at Nike, great company, $180 a share. It's peak three years ago. Now it's at $90 a share. These things happen all the time. Generac, $525 a share, got as low as $78. Bucks. Now it's at $130 to $140. Google was at $180, was at $155, went to $80. Now back up to 170 all-time highs, 180 all-time highs. These things all happen in a matter of one year, sometimes a few months. You've got to be ready for that. You've got to be ready to handle that emotion. And when it comes to interest rates, guys, I truly love it. I love hearing economic policy. I talk about it all the time. But I will be honest with you about this one thing. The more and more money we print, the more and more we're taking away from future growth. That's an absolute fact. Our interest costs have crossed $1 trillion a year from several hundred billion just a year or two ago. And now we're at over a a trillion. And it's only going to get worse as we print more money and as interest rates go higher and higher. That is a reality. You've got to be ready for that. Now, what's going to happen in the world that happens? I don't know. I really don't know. It can't be great, but it doesn't mean it's bad. Are we sacrificing future growth? Sure, but we're already a very wealthy country. We can't expect to be like China and India. They're so much smaller than us economically. Per person, they have way more growth potential than we do. We shouldn't be upset the fact they're going to grow faster than us. Hell, a Chinese recession has only grown 4 or 5% in a year. Our recession is our real GDP is negative, which happened two quarters, a year and a half, two years ago. That stuff happens. So guys... I'm asking you to do two things. Subscribe to the channel if you want four or five videos a week with our updates on stocks, earnings releases, economics. And two, if you want to make better decisions and handle your emotions much better, that's the most important part of investing. Click the link below, get signed up before the wait list uh, gets kicked in. Thank you for your time.